In an earlier video, we had seen a recursive function to calculate the minimum in an array of n integers. Let us now solve the same problem using iteration. So we have this code on the right. And the first thing you observe is we have declared this array to be const. That's because we don't intend to modify the values in the array while calculating the minimum. Now, it seems reasonable to set up a variable that will remember the answer. And at the end of this function, we will uh, return that answer. And if we want to find the minimum, it makes sense that we want to examine every element in the array. So we will look at elements xi, where i starts at 0 and, as usual, goes up to i less than n. And we keep increasing i. So when we look at xi, that may be the minimum. So we should compare it against the uh, answer that we have seen so far. This variable is going to remember the smallest value we have seen so far. And if this xi is even smaller, then perhaps this is the minimum. So we will remember that by updating the value of ants to be this value. And after we have done this for all the elements, this will be our minimum. So this seems perfectly reasonable, but it won't surprise you that I have actually given you buggy code once again. So why don't you pause the video here and head over to Python Tutor and see if you can find the bug. Then we'll discuss. So I hope you had a chance to look at this. Here is that same function. And in the main, we're calling that function on an array of length 3, and that array has three elements, 1, minus 3, and 2. So let's step through this code and see if we can find something strange. So we have initialized our array, and now we call the min function. Remember, n and x are parameters, whereas ans is a local variable. So in the next step, n and x are initialized according to the arguments that were given and x is pointing to this array. And now we initialize our local variable ans and we enter our for loop with i equal to 0. So when i is 0, that's less than n, which is 3. And so we compare x 0 with ans, and ans is also 0, and x 0 is 1. 1 is not less than 0, so we skip this if condition. We increase i to 1 x1 is minus 3. That is less than 0. So we enter this uh, if condition and we update the value of ans to minus 3. Then we increase i to 2. That's still less than n. x2 is 2. 2 is not less than minus 3. So we don't enter this if condition. We increase i to 3. But when we increase i to 3, it will no longer be less than n, so we will actually exit the loop, and this i will disappear because it was only there for the body of the for loop. And then we will return this answer, minus 3, and of course you can see that that is the correct answer, that is the minimum uh, in this array, so what we have printed is correct. Well, wh where is the bug then? We should, of course, test this code on many inputs, not just on one. And one way you can discover the bug is by running it on a different input and seeing that it produces the wrong answer. But in fact, you can see the error uh, as we were executing the code. So if I just rewind the visualization to this point where we have initialized i to 0, that's where we entered the loop. Here we compare x0 with ans. And what we saw was x0 is 1, whereas ans is 0. And we said, therefore, we are going to skip this if condition and go to the next value of i. Well, why did we skip x0? We compared it against ans, and we found that it was smaller. So why did we find it was smaller? This was the first element in the array. That may have been the minimum. So you see, the error is in the way we have initialized ants. We have initialized ants to 0, which means 
this function will only work if the minimum in the array is either zero or negative. In this case, our minimum value was negative, so at some point we did enter this if condition. But what if this array only had positive values? Then just like with x0, we would never have entered this if condition and we would have returned zero is the minimum even though the array had no value zero in it. So the way in which we have initialized this uh, answer is incorrect. So of course, uh, a reasonable way to fix this is to initialize the answer not as zero, but as x zero. That's the first item in the array. And then you don't have to start with i equal to zero. You can start with i equal to one. And if you try this version, and even if you try it on only positive integers, then you will find that this version of the code actually works. So in this case, you can see that the minimum is one. And when we execute this um, code, I won't step through it. I'll just simply jump to the end. You can see that it has correctly printed one as the answer. If you're interested, you should um, step through this code and make sure you understand why it was important to initialize this variable correctly. Initializing it to zero was the mistake. So let us now uh, revisit a concern that we had raised earlier. So here is our fixed piece of code. But do you remember uh, we had raised this kind of a concern before? What if this function is called with certain unexpected arguments? So in this case, what if min is called with n less than or equal to zero? So in, in some sense, we have an empty array. So this is a specific case of this more general concern. We have defined a function that takes all kinds of inputs, but what if mathematically the function was only defined on a strict subset of these possible inputs, right? So in this case, it doesn't make sense to ask for the minimum of an empty uh, array. Uh, it only makes sense if the array actually has positive length. So in that sense, we want to um, define this function only on certain types of n, not negative n and not n equal to zero. So we had actually seen um, three approaches to this. Um, the first solution was, you know, we could put a comment saying don't call this function uh, with n being negative or zero. Uh, and in some sense, that was too weak. Uh, then we had seen this very sort of strong approach, perhaps too strong, which is as soon as we find an error, we just exit and that will not just quit the current function but it will in fact end the whole program. Something else that we could do and that we have actually seen um, is to try and return some impossible value. Uh, now in this particular function uh, there is no value that is impossible right? because any integer could have been the minimum value sitting in this array. After all this is an array of integers. So there is no sort of illegal or impossible value that we could return that could signal to the caller that there was a problem with the input. So is there another possibility? And that's what we're going to consider next.